This episode was brought to you by My Extraordinary Productions, offering budgeting and scheduling services. So you're a bootstrapper like me, and you're going to fund this project yourself. So I've got a little bit of bad news. Whatever you think it's going to cost, it will cost more. Sorry. For me to produce a five-minute short film the way I want to produce it, it usually ends up costing about $3,000, and I've heard of films going for $10,000 and even more. On the other hand, I have done some projects that were essentially free. I do try to budget $100 per project no matter what, just so I can feed everybody. Now every once in a while, you hear some story about someone who managed to put together a whole feature-length film for only $100. It sounds very impressive, but you're not hearing the full story to that. Whenever that happens, you can bet that whoever did it has access to so many resources. For example, they may have been able to save money on a set because their uncle wasn't using the farm that week. Or they may have been able to save money on a DP because the DP owed them a favor. This person could have also saved money by having a friend or two who were tired of working as production assistants, really wanted a better title, and were willing to work for free for the better titles. That way they can use them as leverage later. The point is that you probably did not get the whole story. Now that you've decided you want to produce something, I highly recommend you comb through your script and list everything you could possibly need to make this thing happen. And then, once you've got your list, look through it and figure out what the most difficult to obtain thing is, whatever's the most expensive or just the hardest thing to fake. Can you get it? If you can't get it, is there a way of making something that's close enough, something that'll just get the job done? If you cannot come up with a solution that'll actually work, then you should take that as a sign not to do this project right now. But if you're going to be here for a while, you may have a chance of revisiting that script two or three years from now. Stick with it. Let's talk about money you have to spend no matter what. No matter what, you're going to pay for food. Chances are you have a lot of people working for free for you. Food is a great token gesture. There are some people who will just give everyone $15 and say, come back in an hour. The first problem with doing that is that it might actually be cheaper to hire a catering company or to just order a ton of pizzas from Costco. The second problem is that if you tell someone they can leave, you are trusting them to come back. And if they come back late, it kind of throws off your schedule for the rest of the day and you may not be ready for that type of stress, or maybe you know you can handle it, you just don't want to. Personally, I like to budget $15 per person, and then I'll use something like Grubhub so that everyone gets whatever they want and I don't have to worry about allergies or anything. And then if there's any money left over, I can put that somewhere else in the production. I've seen the food done other ways. I've seen people order pizza. I've seen people hire catering companies. I did also once see someone have their cousin make all the food, so I guess that would be in the catering category, but it was his cousin, so it was cheaper. The other thing you should be prepared to spend money on is sound. People are much more forgiving of bad video than bad audio. If you can only spend money on one of those two things, pick good audio. A sound person can easily charge $300 for the day. I have opted not to hire a sound person, but when I have, it's been because the DP also happened to have sound equipment that already worked really well with his other equipment, or there was just so little going on that I was able to just throw my microphone somewhere and just let it do its thing. Now that we've gone over the things you have to spend money on, here are some things that it's better to have them than to not. If it's a union gig, you have to have film insurance of some sort, and my insurance, which is the cheapest option I was able to find, is about $500 a year. If you're putting together a non-union production, it's still probably better to have the insurance than to not have it. I like to rent an audition space before I put any of my production together because I like being able to meet new talent in a place that is neutral enough for both of us. You know, they appreciate not coming to my house, and I appreciate them not coming to my house. 
Spending $40 on an audition location is $40 invested in knowing that I did not give my address to someone who should not have it. When it comes to renting locations for the shoot and not the audition though, it can easily cost hundreds of dollars, it can easily cost thousands of dollars. One way to save money is to have a friend with the location who owes you a favor or who you will pay back in favors later. Another option is to take whatever space you are able to get and use set decorating to make it look different. Set decorating can still cost money, but it's often less than renting a location. While we're talking about set decoration, set decoration can cost money, so can props, so can wardrobe. I can't really give you a budget for that because it varies depending on your shoot. If you have them, great. If you can borrow them, great. If you are already planning on buying them, great. If you wanted to make them, that's where it gets a little tricky. If you, if you genuinely enjoy making these things and you are already going to do it, great. If you weren't already planning on doing this, then you really have to measure costs versus benefits. Let's pretend you need a cutting board for this scene. Option one is to buy a cutting board for $30. Option two is you already have the wood, you already have the glue, you already have the everything. It takes exactly five minutes for you to put this thing together. Then it totally makes sense. If, however, you have to buy the wood and buy the glue, and that's already $30, and then you have to spend 10 hours putting it together, even if you value your labor at minimum wage, buying a $30 cutting board just got so much cheaper than making it. But if you already wanted to make it, then just make it. Let's talk about hiring a DP or a director of photography. I tend to budget $400 to $1,000 on a DP because I know how good I am at cinematography and I would rather hire that out to anyone else. On top of that, I know how much equipment I'm willing to own, I know how much equipment I'm willing to house, and sometimes it just makes more sense to me to hire someone who has all of the equipment rather than trying to buy or rent it on my own. I already am delegating the task. It makes sense to delegate the task to someone who already has the tools. Another good place to spend the money if you have it is on the rest of your crew. Yes, I do have friends volunteer on both sides of the camera, but I'm able to get away with this because I buy them lunch, I plan around their schedules, I'm very upfront with the commitment, and I just work really hard to make this as pleasant an experience for them as possible. Even if I'm not paying a real wage, I still value their time and offer them favors later on. I also have occasionally signed contracts that say, hey, I'm not paying you now, but I will pay you on the back end. If you have to pay someone right now and you can't defer it and they're not gonna work for free, California minimum wage is $12 an hour, which comes out to $96 for an eight hour day and most actors end up making $125 for the day. Finally, let's talk about music, editing, just post-production in general. If you have the money, it makes sense to spend it here as well, just because you can't do everything on your own. You're going to have to offload a task to someone else. Let's talk about the things I would like to spend money on. If I had the money, it would be really nice to hire an actual catering company, as opposed to piecing together things how I've Piece them. I would also love to be able to pay my actors and crew and everybody their actual rates or their union scale rates as opposed to paying everyone's friend rate. I like my equipment, my equipment does what it needs to do, but it would be nice being able to buy and rent the better equipment. It would also be nice being able to rent actual studios and actual casting facilities and if I needed a restaurant to use an actual restaurant as opposed to making something work. I would also like to hire one person who specifically was in charge of making sure all of the permits were filed and all of the contracts were looked over and basically making sure there are no legal surprises later on down the road. It would also be really cool to have a location shoot where we're able to pay for the travel and the housing and all of the other things that come with having an on-location shoot. Also a period shoot. I would also like to be able to pay for stupid things in contracts, like a bowl of green M&Ms. Okay, so uh, I hope this helped some of you out. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Be sure to follow me on social media, and otherwise, I will see you all next time.